Hello and welcome everyone to another Incarnate Livestream. I'm Mati and today I'm going to be showing you all the tips and tricks on how to make land masses with a fantasy world style. Specifically, we're going to be covering five techniques that I have used to make land masses because I know that it can be a little difficult to know where to start. And if you go online and search, there's like a thousand different ways that you can use, that you can kind of techniques that you can use to kind of shape your land masses. These five techniques are specific to incarnate. You don't have to go anywhere, no separate links. It's just all within the tool. So let's not waste any time and let's get cracking. Hey, yo, glad that you are here. Let's get started here. So first, let me direct you over to the left toolbar. You're going to notice the second tool down. It's called the mask tool. And you'll notice that if I leave my mouse over it, if I drag my mouse over it, Go ahead and go over here. It says the mask tool. The shortcut key for that is the M key for mask. And it's what you use to create your land masses. It even says it right there on the tool tip. So go ahead and click that. And you're going to notice a series of options. We're going to go up to the top here. And what I recommend is that you automatically, it will have the edgy brush. Go up to the top and go ahead and check out the edges and drop that all the way down to three. It's what's called roughness. I've got a tool tip right there, roughness. Hey, first time chatter, Alumandis. Hey, hey, Nemrod. Awesome, so many good people here. And you're gonna go again, click that mask tool. You're gonna go up. It's gonna automatically be set to the edgy brush. Go to that roughness setting and click all the way down to three. And the reason why we want that is because the edgy brush uses cells and we want the smaller cells because we don't want these big blotchy cells when we're adding that mask to the canvas because when you're working with world maps the scale is so much smaller it's not huge so dropping down your at roughness size all the way to three is fantastic hey dragon chalice great first time chatter so glad that you're here for a live stream awesome now once you've made those settings we can go to that first technique Okay, normally also what I recommend is that you turn on the grid because the grid is how you set scale. So you're gonna decide how many square miles or kilometers depending on the measurement, units of measurement you want. So a square could equal 500 square miles, a thousand square miles, it's up to you. The bigger the map, the larger the mileage. Okay, so just think about that. The grid is super helpful because some of you are gonna be like, well, how do I know the distance between this and this or the right scale without having the grid on, okay? So grid is super important. I'm gonna turn it off for right now. The very first technique that I use is just using the built-in option called the world generator. This option is only available to specific styles. For instance, fantasy world, which is the style we're working in, parchment world and fantasy regional the battle map styles do not have this option okay so just remember that if you're not sure where it is you can go ahead and close your objects in the right panel it says objects right below objects it says world generator okay and it's going to be set to 65 percent ocean by default and clear all stamps and fill layers with default textures. Now, the clear all stamp means that when you click that, that nice shiny yellow generate new world button, what happens is, is that it will delete all the stamps as well as the previous landmass formation. So click this off if you have any stamps, but since you'll be creating the map, there probably won't be any, any kind of stamps on it. So you don't have to select that if you don't want to turn it on or off in the beginning, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and delete uh, this world generator thing right here because we don't need it. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on the world generator and select it and show you how it operates. So if you just click generate world, it pops up. Just give it a moment to generate the world. It's going to head and use whatever settings you have for the edgy brush. That's going to be those same settings. Okay. So we're going to wait a moment to it to a generate. It usually doesn't take this long because I'm streaming it but for you it won't take more than just a couple seconds so just be patient hey first time chatter valentine phoenix so glad that you're here awesome hey how's it going critical zone awesome glad that you're here oh tick tick tock i feel like the jeopardy theme song should be on right now do 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 there we go 
So now that it pops up, now one thing that you'll notice is that it has um, some of the landmass around the edges. Don't worry about that, that's not a big deal. Just go and select the subtract button. It's called a subtract mode. When the mask tool is selected, just select that D key or select subtract and then just boost the size by holding down the shift and mouse scroll wheel and just remove these edges. So I just go across once and just remove that. Might be a little bit of a lag here. Hey, I'm doing good. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just remove those edges. Don't worry about it looking perfect at first. It's gonna take a few moments, but let's just go ahead and remove each side. And that way it's not coming in contact with the edges because hey, that looks weird, right? So now that you've removed those sides, you can go back to the add mode of it and you can just press the A key and it will go over. And then I'm gonna drop the size down. And what I'll do is fill out the rest of the landmass. So I might wanna have a shape right here. Just fill it out. Maybe I want some shape here. I'm, what I'm gonna to try to do is remove those kind of hard edges there. There we go. And if you feel like and there's not the right amount of continents that you want, then you can just subtract and remove what you want. Just go back, D key, subtract, pick a smaller size. Let's say that you want these to be two separate continents. Perfect, right? Let's say that you want another continent here. Think of it as like you're cutting some meat. You're doing a cut. Just cut that in half so you have two continents there or whatever. And you can click the Generate World button multiple times to see if it comes up with a configuration that you like. So it's okay if you're not happy with the first one, just click it again, okay? So there's a lot of cool options with that. That's the first and most easiest technique really is just let the tool do most of the work for you. Let it, let it generate um, the land masses and then you just edit and kind of fine tune it to getting the kind of shapes and land masses that you want. So I'll let this finish generating and then we'll move on to the next technique. One cool thing is if you're not happy with anything, you can go to clear all. It's, if you go to that mask tool, click the M key and then click this clear all option, it's gonna remove all land or everything that's the add mode of the mask tool. So it's just gone. Great to use if you're not happy with the way you've done your land masses, right? So now after we've done the world generator, the next one is what's called the Pangea method, or what I call the Pangea method, or the supercontinent, okay? Supercontinent, that's what Pangea is. Take a really large brush with the add mode of the mask tool and just make a giant blob. Don't worry about making it perfect. Don't worry about making it have weird horns or archipelagos. Just make a giant blob. Just think of the supercontinent Pangea on Earth. We're gonna do that. So let's go ahead and just fill up the screen with as much as I can without going over the edges a bit. And from there, we'll go ahead and delete this text here. And I'll show you what to do from here. So you have this giant slab here, right? Now you wanna think about, well, what happens if I want three continents? Well, you've got one mega continent, so you have to make two cuts, okay? So if I go to subtract like this, bring the size down, and let's say that I want to make one cut here, and then let's do another cut near the bottom. So here's the next cut right here. So now you have three continents. Now you might think to yourself, well, what do I do next? Well, whenever working on land masses, you're always gonna be carving out and adding to give it more character. So you continue with the subtract mode. Maybe you want to create some distance between these two continents, just like kind of our world, the earth, there's some distance, there's an Atlantic Ocean in between the larger land masses. Let's say that you want to do that as well. Then go ahead and start making some cuts to start to widen that space to kind of create that middle ocean, right? Let's say that you want to uh, create multi another one. Let's say you want five continents, then you would have to cut, make another cut. So it's just some simple addition to figuring it out. And then of course, the next step is once you have the general shapes, then you go in with a smaller brush with subtract and really start carving out some shapes that you want. And there are multiple kinds of fun shapes that you can make. For instance, there are things like a horn, 
And a horn would be something like this. This is a horn right here. Let's say that you want to have some kind of archipelago. That's not hard. Small subtract and just go ahead and isolate one section, cut it off from the main thing using the subtract move, and then go in with a very small brush and just start breaking it up to start making your archipelagos. That's it. Just take a single island piece and then start cutting it up multiple times. Hey, Nimrod, welcome. Glad that you're here. Sweet. And of course, the, if you want it to look a little bit more natural, the more and more cuts you'll have to make, okay? So you'll go in and just with that small brush and just start breaking up those edges to get that nice coastline. And you can make all kinds of fun things. Maybe you wanna make like a bay or something. So you have a nice big bay or sea here. Just carve that out. There you go, there's a nice one. Maybe you want to have some kind of shattered islands kind of thing. Let's just make some circles around here first. Let's do one circle here. Let's do another circle here. And I'm using both a pen and a mouse. So, and the circles don't have to be perfect because guess what? It probably wouldn't look like that in real life either. Then go ahead and have some jutting away from it. And we'll start creating these kind of shattered islands. And these are just the first strokes. You'll do more as you go, of course. And then what I like to do from there is just do some single clicks on top. Single clicks, like multiple single clicks with a mouse or pen. And what that's gonna do is gonna start creating some breaking up of those edges. So you just tap, tap, tap like that. And then you can do it multiple sizes as well. You might end up doing multiple runs with multiple sizes, mask sizes, but that's how you would put together that. So that's that technique, the Pangea method, a supercontinent. Then you do your cuts to create the multiple continents that you want, however many you want. And then you'll start coming in with your fine tuned, smaller subtract brushes and start going around the edges and start chiseling off uh, the more detail. So you'll start end up start chiseling off these edges with that small subtract. Okay. So a super easy technique, not complex. Let's go ahead and clear all and I'll show you the next technique that I use. I'm going to go ahead and clear everything. The next one is called framing or what I call framing. And the reason why I call it this is because I'm going to be making the Arctic and subarctic or Antarctic land masses first. And the reason why I do that is because it's going to create the frame. It's going to think of it as two buns in between a sandwich or a hamburger, right? So we start with that first, just like our planet, we have um, the Antarctic and the Arctic. Let's go ahead and create this. Now, when you do this, I totally recommend that you have a couple horns. And by horns, I mean kind of a landmass that juts out. You see that there's a couple here already. There's some land masses jutting out. Go ahead and fill those in. That's the Arctic. Let's make the Antarctic. Let's go in here, make sure that I have some kind of horn that pops out. And I'll mention why I'm why I want those horns in there because we're going to be using those horns as a guide to decide where the middle land masses are, right? So now that we have those two continents there, let's say that I want to connect this Antarctic like this with another continent like this. We'll make it big at first. And normally what I do is I make the larger continents first, the super larger ones, and then I'll go in and do other things. So let's go ahead and select this fill option here. You can make your land shapes like this and then fill it with a bucket. So if I click this and select that, it should fill in just that section or it should, there you go. So it fills it in like that. So you don't have to fill in the whole thing. Just make your shape first. Oops, I don't wanna do that. It'll accidentally fill in the whole thing, my mistake. One moment, just go to undo when it's done. Oopsie, <laughs> my mistake. We'll go back, just undoing. Oh, so beautiful that I can undo. Look, hey, people make mistakes. I make mistakes. So um, we'll go over that real quick again. So if you make the shape first, doesn't matter what shape it is, just whatever, make this weird, funky shape that you like. 
make it a kidney bean or whatever it is you want. And then you can go in with that bucket and then just click. Just make sure that the, the path that you've created with the add mode of the mask tool is closed off. If it's not closed off, it's gonna fill up the whole screen, okay? So basically what the framing method does is it kind of gives you options on where to put land masses determined by the horn. So I've made it to where there's an isthmus right here. If you're not familiar with what an isthmus is, I know it's kind of hard to pronounce here, but basically it's a very thin piece of land that connects two larger land masses. This is an isthmus. If you don't want an isthmus, you can go ahead and just kind of delete by just going to the subtract mode and just subtract some of this and make it a little straight what's called a straight. It's a very small or kind of a linear type of opening between two bodies of land that water can go through, generally connecting two oceans. That's what's called a straight. So you'll have that, or you can just have it be, again, an isthmus where they're connected to each other. An isthmus is a, like I said, very small strip of land that connects two larger land masses. So look it up, hard to spell, by the way. So lots of different ways, and then, You'll notice that if I want, I can go ahead and shape it to make it look like maybe they're getting close to each other like this. This framing method is a technique that just kind of makes it easier to uh, make a more Earth-like map, but you don't have to go in that direction if you don't want to. It's totally up to you because the whole point of fantasy is to step away from the more Earth-like technique, okay? So that's how you go do that. We're going to do two more the next one is using textures first i'm going to clear this off we can just remove this landmass and using textures is really really helpful in my opinion because they there are some great artifacts within textures that you can use as a guide so if i go over to the brush tool you can click that b key it should open it up and then open up that catalog and there are multiple textures that you can use i personally like this water one because it has some really nice um, artifacts in it. So if I just go ahead and select the layer, the BG layer, and click Fill, Fill Background Layer with the Active Texture. If I click the FG, watch it change it, it says Fill Foreground. So the BG is just anything that's not with the Add Mode of the Mask tool. If I just go ahead and fill that, you're gonna notice that there are some nice artifacts in here. Notice that? And what I'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my Mask Effects because this is probably what's causing some lag. And you'll notice that there are some nice things that you can use to kind of create land masses here. You can see some nice shapes here. Let's say I want to put another one here. And if you're not satisfied with the overall um, texture and where it is, you can always rotate, resize, and change the position of, of it to change the actual body shapes that you want, okay? I'm just using the path tool, but you would fill those sections in with the mask tool. And if you go over to this texture, you can change the size of it. Maybe you want them to be bigger land masses. Maybe you want them to be smaller land masses. Maybe you want to rotate it. You can rotate, you can change the horizontal and vertical offsets. So, and then you can use whatever texture that you want really to kind of create your land masses. So I would technically, if I wanted to use this, I just go in here and just kind of fill it in with what I liked. Say I wanted to go to here, whatever, let's go all the way up to here. And then you can just go to your bucket and just kind of click both of those empty negative spaces and then fill them in. So textures work fabulous. Just make sure that you turn off that texture in other words, repaint over the BG layer with the ocean texture of your choice so that that way it's not there anymore. So you'll have to repaint that. But texture technique works fabulous. Use it all the time. It might work for you too. And the more and more that you do these techniques, the less and less you'll need them because over time you'll begin to develop an eye for landmass shapes, a sense of pseudo realism, and everything like that. So you kind of cultivate these techniques over time and then eventually you'll be able to do it without using any kind of technique. It should be easy to you. So you just give it time. The next is plate tectonics or using stencils. So, and I love using stencils. I use these all the time. Uh, basically what you do is you'll make a bunch of shapes with the path tool and you don't have to do that. Uh, I actually have a stencil um, 
map that you can clone and edit that has a lot of these shapes with the path tool. And you can just go in and just clone and edit that map, select a landmass, rotate, and then just put them together where you think they fit. Think of it as like a puzzle. And you just kind of put together the pieces that you think work together. You can even overlap them. Let's say that you're not satisfied with the original shape. Then you can just go ahead and connect them, put them together to kind of make your shapes. It's really up to you. You can copy, paste, you can make them larger, smaller, and just kind of place them where you want them. So that's why I totally recommend using that. You can make your own land mass, land mass shapes with the path tool and then just save them as kind of cookie cutter pieces that you can then fill in with the add mode of the mask tool. Of course, you'll have to do the outlines first and then click that fill. So now if you would like to use the stencils, I'm gonna go ahead and provide a link in the chat. You go ahead and just select that, open that up, and you'll see all the landmass stencils that I have. Just clone, edit that, um, make multiple clones, and then that way you can just kind of use the stencils to make your own landmass shapes, because again, I know it's hard to do that. Probably in the future, uh, when we have time, we'll do more realistic streams on how to make more realistic land masses and uh, like super realistic that will be for the future i know some people really really prefer that and that's okay but that's a ton of work so in the meantime try utilizing any of these five techniques i'm sure some of them won't work for you you won't like them and others will so you just have to decide for yourself which technique works best for you. If none of these work for you, believe me, there are tons of ways of looking up how to put together land masses. This is not the only way, but these are all the ones that I could think of in tool and that I've used in the past, and I hope that they will work for you as well. Again, don't forget to check out that land mass stencils link if you want to use those. I know there are some maybe some new users, new chatters who are unfamiliar with the tool. Absolutely download, clone, edit that map, and use those stencils to put together your maps, okay? Now the last thing that I just want to mention is just um, the mask effects. And I just wanna mention how to use them real quick. So I'm not gonna make any fancy land masks, but I wanna show you how to use them because what makes your land masses pop is gonna be these mask effects, okay? Now how you decide mask effects is determined by the textures that you use for the land and the textures that you use for the water. Okay, so I'm going to first enable the mask effects there at the bottom. The default mask effects will be on where there's going to be like a white outer shadow and then a dark inner shadow. Okay, and these work fine by themselves, but it really depends on what's going on. Now, since I have such a dark um, water texture, that dark blue, it works just fine to use a light sh outer shadow because it's gonna pop out. So let's click this outer shadow. Let's increase the intensity so you can kind of see what it looks like. Just give it a moment. So you see here, this is that outer shadow and you can change it to white, whatever color that you want, that's up to you. I'm gonna be using contrast to make the map look good. So I'm gonna drop the intensity down. That's just a little bit too much contrast right there. And I'm also gonna use uh, I'm going to turn off that ripple effect. I don't, that's not going to be necessary. I don't, I'm not going to use that. I'm also going to use a inner shadow, which is this dark kind of black color. And I'm going to cause the blur, the shadow blur to go really far inward. And the reason why I'm doing that is because it's going to create a beveled effect where it looks like the edges kind of go down and then it goes up. So it's just what's called a bevel. Let me increase the intensity so you can see what that kind of looks like. Give that a moment. Let's increase the blur and then drop the intensity just a little bit more because I don't want it to be so intense. It's a little too much intensity for me, all right? Mask effects, super important. They're gonna really, really help to make your land masses pop, okay? If it was the other way around where your water was very bright, try using a dark or black outer shadow while your land masses are a lighter color or a darker color, sorry, a darker color, then try using a lighter inner shadow, okay? The trick to making land masses pop out is contrast. That's all determined about the color or the texture that you use for both your water and your land. Again, 
Lighter land textures means try using a darker inner shadow. If you're using dark textures for the land, light inner shadow, okay? That same technique applies to the outer shadow, determining on how bright your water is. So that's the trick to making land masses pop out. And in the future, we'll probably make a video on how to utilize mask effects because those are the two easiest ones that I know of is just using contrast, but there are other ones as well. So we'll go over that in another video. All right, well, I hope this was helpful. Those are all the techniques I know for land masses. Next week, we have, I believe, uh, how to create bridges with the fantasy battle map style. And I'm going to be showing you how to make a large bridge. We're going to go over the terms and terminology about bridges and how to put them together. We'll even have a little section on clipping masks. And then I have one quick announcement. Next month, and just moving forward, we're going to be doing less live streams. So we'll probably do the first and third week of the month because I'm going to be spending more time creating recorded videos covering the more basic stuff like how to use the mask tool, how to use the brush tool, how to use the stamp tool. Basically very simple nugget size five minute clips covering each tool. So I'll be busy with the next several weeks uh, starting next month. I'm making these simple videos for everyone. So just expect a smaller number of streams now just twice a month instead of four, okay? Because I'll be so busy with that. All right, well, hey, thank you so much, everyone. So glad that you came and joined me. I'm looking forward to seeing you all next Wednesday. Please stay safe and healthy, okay? Avita Zane, my friends.